Today we're at T-Club and you're gonna see what we get up to. I'm walking up hills, I'm out of breath. Tigro sits about an hour and a half outside of Cape Town in the Rosenville Wooster area. It is a beautiful tale sitting on the banks of the Brandfle River. It is definitely one you need to visit. And as per usual, the drive out to Wooster, Rosenville area is always magnificent in the morning. The mountains, the sun, just Good morning, beautiful. morning. Good welcome to Tigro. This was a trail led by one of the OTBT ambassadors, Graham. He was taking the guys out to Tigro, which is quite an arduous, difficult trail. But a fun trail nonetheless, especially with a lick a bunch of guys. Too badly on top. <laughs> right. Couple things for today. Very simply, this is not a walk in the park track. First of all. Second of all, you are responsible for your own vehicle. Right? Just because Shando has taken one line does not mean I can necessarily take the same line. So you need to evaluate your own vehicle on this track. Um, no, 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 we need the Fords in the middle somewhere. No. Ronnie, your Ford is going to be fine on this track. The Fords will already be through it. If something happens, this is not snatch recovery territory. Static ropes. Because here, if something goes wrong with the snatch recovery, it can go horribly wrong. This is a slow track. This is not a balls to the wall speed and you'll, you'll use your power when you need to. But we need to be mindful of the track, the terrain that we're on. Um, how far you can reverse if you need to reverse. And there is one steep... Uh, can you tell us about what's happening here today and uh, where are we? And uh... Today I was invited by Graham. Uh, we're doing Tierkloof. Uh, I'm quite nervous. Um, apparently, there's a like it's a very hard trail, very technical forward. trail. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm gonna see what I can do. So Wani needs to keep his lights on while four by four. Can you tell us why? No, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Wani put a radio in his van now, but being a Ford, it's a problematic vehicle. So he's two way radio. <laughs> Because of the can bus system, only works when his lights is on. Yes, uh, we, we took about two days to figure that out. So Shame. Yeah. It's with fine. Five, with it's five different radios. Yeah. Every time they plug it into the Ford, bah, nothing. Doesn't want to work. Doesn't want to work. Okay, so, One so day now we're driving, switch the lights on. Hey, my radio's working. I'm so like, now we know yeah. it's, it's a Ford issue. So we know we've got a yeah. difficult driver because we've got driver problems and we've got vehicle problems. Yes. So um, even on the with best the odds, in the middle of with the, the guys, odds is against you, yeah. Oh, this is very much against you. You know, you already got a handicap with the Ford, so... <laughs> <laughs> but good luck, man. Enjoy. Thank you, man. Shot. As in true Wooster fashion, the morning was already hot. We knew it was going to be a scorcher of a day out in the mountains. Today we are at Tierkloof. A very challenging trail. Walking up, you can see this rock climb over here. We got Wasim coming down over there. This is one for the books. The last time I did Tierkloof was at night. Today we're doing it in the daytime, but it is still not an easy throw. It is a tow. Whew, it is a slow, technical drive. It is not a performance drive where you accelerating. Here it's all about choosing the right line, having the right vehicle, and having decent recovery points. I'm out of breath because it's heavy up here, here. But the other thing is, is when you do this throw, you need to make sure that you're not in a standard vehicle. The convoy wasn't big, but it was big enough. Enough to have the gears, enough to have the fun, enough to really explore and have just a magnificent time out in a trail that's not often ridden. Um, it's a very small group of people that always go out to Tier Grove to experience it because it is a fully rocky mountainous trail.
but only one of us here now. I'm recording already. Just save footage. Check out that look, man. Check out that look. <laughs> you having fun, Graham? Yeah. This is great. The guys are listening to instructions, following the lines. It's working perfectly. Here we go. We got big one coming up. What line did you take? No, he's tough as well. What I'm worried about there, it's very close to that ridge. What, did, what is that under his stuff? Did they have a look for me? What is that under his stuff? Uh, okay. No, 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 but we also worried that your stuff is quite low at the back there because of, of weights, man. That's awning. So awning on the radio. <laughs> the new radio. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to get that there. Jump into uh, Washington's uh, arms there. <laughs> Catch me! Are you really bad? I don't know I don't Look at that face, man! Look at that face, he's like... Use him! <laughs> That's how you do it! Lovely stuff! Why did you see that? <laughs> Did you see that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So Connor's your your two IC. Connor's my two IC with Graham here. Graham is our HNIC today. You know what's HNIC? No. Head nigger in charge. <laughs> Too much, just leave it. Bit more, bit more, bit more. No, 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 don't drive. Right. Okay, wait, wait. Just try just one more time. Because you're just not getting over the stump here. Just like, like that. Just like that. Slow, slow, slow. Try to keep the line safe. Slow, slow. Ah, Simon! He's nerves! He's clap! Slowly, slowly. Do you have turf lock on? Yep. Okay. You see, this rock is very smooth. You see? Not gannet, not gannet, just constant. No, 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 Alistair. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Who's on him? Phone on you! Turn to your right here, right hand down. Okay, stop there, right hand down. Just like that. Forward. Little bit more to your right. here we go. 
Right. Keep down turn, down turn. Keep turn to your right. No, no. Not bad, but a, but a, but a, but a timer. You're not even on yet, you're spinning. Very nice, Mark. Very nice. We are right now. Is your nerves a bit well good? Done. What line are you going to take? Okay. I'm glad I found your group. <laughs> yeah, come back. Come back slowly. As I up over the rock. Right, right, go. Yeah. Bit more. Right. Now turn passenger side down. Just like that. A bit more, a bit more. Passenger side down. No, no, don't go back. Now you try and go forward, but keep the constant momentum. And then you turn to the passenger side as you're doing it. There we go. Ah, safe. Okay. Easy peasy. Right. Here we have Dark here in the 76. We don't know if the Land Cruiser can make this trail. He might have to turn around and go home today. Like a bunch of fucking brothers go and drive. But it was like, what out? They were like, one thing you will love about Tirkloof is the views while you are up on the mountain. The views of the Brandfleet Dam, which seems to span on forever. And if you look quickly, you actually think it's an ocean because it's that big. Under the right expertise and guidance from the guys, everybody was able to get up safely and get down. David is very nervous. We are going up a climb here that there's been a lot of wheel lift. And uh, David is thinking that his cruiser is not going to make it today. 
but I think Dafir is underestimating. If it doesn't make it over, it is pure driver error. <laughs> Here we go. Because this is a 76 cruiser with front, center, and rear tail flop. So there is no way we cannot make it up. That's how you do it. That's that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Just putting it out there. We should actually put this vehicle in front. Look at that, look at that. It's nice. Dobby, how are you feeling, Dobby? No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. There you go. Check it. Look at Alistair. Right here is where you can suck on right now. So your base bit. Go slightly back and I'm gonna throw a rock under you. Yeah, I'm gonna come on this line here. <coughs> I'm giving you a ramp, no, you can see it's a ramp. No, this yeah. will work. That's it. Once you get your wheels up, it all depends on your car's length. Some cars will reach over and it is. I didn't even feel it up here, but I was hiding it's not, up here. This is not really an obstacle, that's why I said with both The vehicle is going to be coming up on the edge here.
Do you want to finish that way or that way? That way. Okay. At the top, I'm going to tell you to stop. before he hit this rock here. Yeah. Did you manage to get um, the fuel pump over? It's uh, almost, almost. Um, there's only a couple of liters left now.
Oh, what's the... So, Juani. Yeah, we are. You enjoying this track so far? I'm enjoying it. We are tier two. The only problem I have is that every time keep me, uh, they, they, they stop me on top of a hill. Ah. So just to make it difficult. Yeah, but the Serenji has been performing today. Yeah. That's a wonderful Top sight. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that went through me. <laughs> Straight, 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 forward, for me, keep going forward. Keep going, keep going. You can pick a line. Okay. If you want to, stay left, go yeah. slow, then you to give yourself a bit more of a challenge, take a hard right, you think it Cross axle, climb onto another wall and out. Okay. Either way, it's a breeze. Okay. Enjoy.
enjoying the drive so far? You were making everything. I mean, you did what a Land Cruiser did with ease. I wish I had a Land Cruiser. See, there we got a Ford plane. We're going a Ford plane. Well, to everybody that is here, I'd like to introduce you through to Aristo Stain. He's from Precinct Medics and he's going to give us just a couple tips on what can happen in an environment like this that you've just driven through and give us tips on what we can do in an eventuality of somebody getting hurt. So Rista, I hand over to you. Oh, Graham, thank you very much. Pleasure. Yeah guys, as Graham said, I'm from Precinct Medics, myself and Debbie there behind the camera. We are volunteer medics in Gwotasak, Richwood area, so we run volunteer calls there for the for the people there and then we also help with things like this it was lucky to be with you guys so as graham says in this place where we are today there's a lot of nice vehicles but there's no ambulance here if something happens and you saw today graham had a little tumble i had a little tumble and i'm sure there's a few more people that had a little tumble or almost tumbles things can happen some of you that saw when graham came up here he thought you could take that obstacle i was licking the rocks there so you can have a vehicle tipping over what do we knew, do? So the first thing I'm going to show you is things you always have to have with you. This is not negotiable. A roll of duct tape. It doesn't only fix people, it also fixes vehicles. Clean wrap. Believe it or not, this is a medic's best friend. And I'll tell you now what you can do with this. The other stuff lying here, I'll show you now. And then another little thing you need for your first aid box is this awesome little thing I've got in my hand here. You can see it folds up very small. It is a splint. You roll it out. You can form it to any wound, body part, whatever you need for a fracture or anything like that. Because, face it guys, what are you going to get here? Possibly a fracture, a sprain. You might end up, and I almost didn't touch the fire here, you'll end up with a burn wound. In a chance that a vehicle rolls, it's more than likely just going to tip. You might not have an injury, but you might have glass breaking, you might end up with lacerations and stuff. So what do we do? If blood is coming out, not good. Stop it. If a bone is sticking out, not good. Don't push it back in, leave it there. So, if someone has fallen, and he's, you think he's broken an arm, he's broken a leg. What's the first thing we're going to do? We need to splint that to keep it secure. And what are we going to splint with? If you have this, you use this. If you don't have this, that's when you start improvising. Everybody carries selfie sticks. I can splint the arm. I can extend it and I can splint this full leg. How do you secure it? Duct tape, ratchet strap, anything you've got. Secure the little splint. Obviously, if you're securing splints or anything with duct tape, don't tighten it so the fingertips turn blue. Just keep it in place so it doesn't fall off. Something that everybody else has got in their vehicle. Wheel spanner. If I fractured my arm, there we go. Strap is fast, it's secure. There, I can step. Yeah, anywhere. Need a longer splint? You've got a tire rod that you need to lift your, put them together. There, you've got a longer splint. Easy peasy. Selfie stick again. I can splint the arm. I can splint there if I don't want it moved. Easy stuff. You've all got this in your vehicles. So just by looking around you quickly. That vehicle there, there you've got off-road tracks. You can secure somebody with that. There's vehicles here with safety nets. That one there, the Jeeps, there's safety nets. You can use that to secure people. Anything you can get to splint. Pick up a branch. Obviously, branch is not always straight, but do the best you can. Clean wrap. Wrap it around. Not only can you see what's going on there, it also secures it. So if there's extra bleeding or you now suddenly see it turns blue cut it off resplint it quickly with your cling wrap if someone has burned themselves number one burn gel 
burn is. It is expensive. If you don't have it, take a shirt, grab somebody's shirt. Guys, don't grab the first female you see. Shirt. <laughs> grab the guy next to you shirt first. If you've run out of guy shirts, then you grab the female shirts. Take a shirt, wet it, put it over, cling wrap around it. The cling wrap will keep it nice and moist. It will keep it cool. That's why the guy is nice and comfortable until you can get into a hospital. What else have we got here? How are we going to secure? We've not talked about splints. If you need to make someone comfortable, Uncle, come here. Oh, oh ops can I? Okay. Why'd you pull the Ford gun? <laughs> so he's broken his arm. Your arm needs to be kept secure. Are you going to keep it secure here? You're going to put it there. <laughs> You're gonna do that? He's got a bolt-in sling. Yeah, he's got a bit of a safety cushion, yeah, that's gonna help it. But then you've got a bolt-in sling. <laughs> and a bolt-in pouch, <laughs> and a bolt-in <laughs> pouch. Okay, okay, okay. So that's, got it. <laughs> that's the easiest way of securing someone's arm. <laughs> Thank you for your sacrifice, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> only, only about a thousand people will see it. It's not a worry. <laughs> you got to edit it out there. Don't worry, we'll put your name in the script. Glider, yeah. It's a Ford plane. It's a Ford plane. <laughs> <It's a Ford laughs> <laughs> so, folks, that is just quickly some basics that you need to do. If it's bleeding, stop the blood with anything you can. If you do have a wound, if you put something on it, never take whatever you put on that wound off to see what's happening. See there, got a you keep plate. it on there. The if plate. the blood safe seeps through, you put something else on. You just keep on adding no. until you get on there. A lot of people will tell you use a tourniquet. Do not use tourniquets, please. If you do not know how to use them, they are very dangerous. There's a long way to go down a mountain to get to the hospital. You can cause a lot more damage with a tourniquet if you are not trained in working with a tourniquet. So rather not do that, clear the wound, keep it, stop the blood. If by any chance someone is ever bitten by a snake, don't do all these western tricks with your knife and cut two slits with your leather man and suck out the blood and suck out the venom and all that. It doesn't work. Above the wound, try and put a bit of a pressure bandage over that, above where it is. Try and keep it lower than the heart, so the venom takes longer to come up there, and you treat what you see. If the guy is fine, then cut off his leg. If he now starts saying, I'm feeling dizzy, you deal with that. It's very difficult in the field, but you deal with what you see. If he stops breathing, you start CPR. CPR is a whole different thing. Most of you should know how to do that. Just go on from there, make the person comfortable, and get them to a hospital. So one thing I must say with snake bites, and it's very important, is you must identify yes. the snake. You must take a photo, or if you can, if you can't get a photo, at least someone that saw it, you have to, because anti-venom is dependent exclusively snake on snake. what yeah. snake it is. So but very important, guys, identify the snake, please don't kill it. Yeah. You're in his territory, identify the snake, as, as I said, get a photo, take it with the hospital. If you you phone them and tell them an email, tell them this is the snake, send it through so they can start figuring out what it is. With any injury, with any injury you sustain or anything, main thing, keep your patient calm, you stay calm, make them comfortable in a vehicle, and as fast and as safely as you can, get to a hospital. Don't go 140 down the mountain and roll the van 3, 14 times and have to pick you up. Slowly, Make your way to the hospital, keep the guy comfortable, they will sort him out. And that I think is enough tips for today. If you want to know anything, if you want to have a chat to us, we are around, have a chat. <laughs> Josh, we would like to show, um, uh, can you demonstrate uh, CPR on the uh, 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 please? So again, guys, get a splint like this, it's 100 bucks. Where do you get those? Sam splint. Sam splint, 
We will give a link. We also we will set up a four by four specialized first aid kit that's got all these type of things in for you guys. It will have this. It will have that. You should have this in your vehicle in any case. Wheel brace also. Uh, you should have that in your vehicle. So I'm putting in your first aid kit. Wheel brace also. I was going to give you the size of my nut. <laughs> so, I'd like the, the for an additional price. price like like, like, the like a, lo a lot of people have cross wheel braces, but what yes. you can use is your jack handle. Uh, yes. Your jack. Your any jack comes with a bar. All of that stuff. Uh, yeah. I've actually yeah. got that. You can even a cross wheel brace. You can just. It's yeah. going to stick out. But you can still make if that's all yeah, you that's have, all that got. is what you that's use. What you yeah. use. Which, which you must use yeah. Okay, thank you guys. Thank that you. Is a brief thank you very much. First aid thingy for you. We will give you more tips as we go along. Thank Enjoy the rest of the day. So after the safety and first aid talk, we were able to just take it in and understand that we sometimes have to realize that we are in dangerous environments. Things can go wrong. We can break arms, we can get bitten by spiders. People can get sick on the trail. I myself have experienced being sick while being camping. And if you don't know what to do, you stand. You literally are standing in the middle of nowhere. So just familiarize yourselves, guys, get a good first aid kit. That is the number one thing to have in your vehicle. And make sure you're familiar with what's in your first aid kit. Coming down this mountain also allows you to look down and savor the views down onto the Brantford Dam. But just remember, you need a good set of tires and you need patience because the descent is just as long as the ascent. Bit more left. Nervous again, with the dip. With the dip going down here now.
And then we got a little call on the radios to say that Mark Peak's tie rod end had snapped. That meant that he cannot steer his wheels left or right coming down the trail. And he was halfway down, and to get a vehicle down like that in the middle of nowhere on rocky terrain can really be a struggle. So as per usual, we had to do a bush mechanic fix. Luckily, okay. we've always got tools and we've always got little bunches and stuff to tie things up. And that's what you kind of need to do in a situation like this. You need to make do with what you have. That's why you need to have some things so that you might not be able to get this vehicle all the way home. Like Mark's vehicle couldn't get back home, but we could get it down the trail so that the next morning he could come back and replace the part that was broken. And that way, he was able to know with peace of mind that his vehicle's not stuck in the top of a mountain and might roll down the mountain while he's not there. Take the stone, Kiki. Yeah, I want to put it under. Yeah. But it's just in the case. Situations are really nice. We had to learn very quickly. You were that ball to into also, no? Yeah. I'm yeah. feeling, uh, uh, jumping, uh, jumping, jumping. Yeah, and it's already, look, I'm not even, this is finger tightening, no? Yeah, you see, it's gonna, it's gonna come out. If it. you want, you got an option. What is? More, uh, yeah, the same one here. Yeah. Let I'll me just look. The track from here. Look, it's not that far. Look, this can work. Hold on top. Oh, nice, you got like a mole. Okay, guys, so you take the right at the fork and you enter the side. You need lots of momentum. Okay. And then you go about half meters, keep like your wheels in the right. It's so weak, guys. Yeah, no, don't go left. To keep it down, but yeah, you, yeah, you want to pull it through this loop here? Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, that will actually that hold it like that in place. If I pull it through this loop here, and then you tighten it here on top, and then I turn it slightly on top here, tight. Not yeah. tight. Just like but that. Just enough, just so that it doesn't so pop yeah, up. It doesn't look yeah. yeah. old, yeah. Did you ask me if you can cut my um, uh, strap? <laughs> <laughs> That's sacrifice. A small piece, man. Damien, wait. Just like that. Really small. Small. Just, <laughs> just, just like that. You know what I mean? So I just so that it doesn't get left. Uh, Not tight, that it can still move. But it doesn't get left. But it will, it will stretch a bit. Yeah. You see, as long as it doesn't stretch so much that the thing comes out. Yeah, yeah, because remember the thing is in the air now, no? Yeah. When the wheel goes on, it goes down. Don't you have insurance that you throw the tow truck or something? No, no, not like that type of insurance. It's too much. It costs too much. It's 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 too much. My silver van insured for 210,000 rand. And 4x4 roadside assistance that video I was making earlier cost me 360,000 rand. Yes, that's okay. My wife's dad. We're all insured with him. My trailer's insured for 250,000 rand. It cost me 180,000 rand. Turn. 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 Do we still got play here? Yeah, there's still play. Okay, guys, that's all right. That's all right. Let's go with it and see. Okay, Mark, you can calm down. First gear, tough lock on. Slow. Slowly but surely we guided Mark down. We took him down section by section, just checking that it stayed in place, that all our little MacGyver ties and cable ties and ratchet straps are staying in order just to Turn get this vehicle down. down to the bottom. It took a while, like that. but that's what teamwork's about. It's about working together, making sure everybody's safe and everybody leaves happy and Slowly. everybody You're leaves knowing that their vehicles are like not that. damaged Trying and if they are damaged, they're at least safe. Okay, you're good to go. So you just get your turn, slow down. You're gonna make it. You know, because you've got no big turns. Yeah. The big turns is what could throw the, 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 the system out. Straighten, yeah, straighten. There we go. Just keep it just like that. Straight, slow, straight, slow.
so we had the final stitch coming down here now. We were gonna get to level ground where we could get Mark out through the farm roads. We managed to get him back to the starting point. I just would like to say a special thank you to Graham Butler for organizing this event as an OTBT ambassador and taking the guys out and making sure everybody was good, everybody had fun, everybody was safe, and it was just a family fun day as per usual. So until the next trail, we'll see you out there. Be safe and be good.